Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Today we celebrate the memorial of Saint Bernard, Abbot and Doctor of the Church. And we offer this Mass especially for the people of Saint Joseph's Parish. Before we celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us ask for forgiveness to the Lord our God. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, and I have, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who made of the Abbot St. Bernard a man consumed with zeal for your house, and a light shining and burning in your church. Grant through his intercession that we may be on fire with the same spirit and walk always as children of light. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me, son of man, by a sudden blow, I am taking away from you the delight of your eyes, but do not mourn or weep or shed any tears. Groan in silence, make no lament for the dead, bind on your turban, put your sandals on your feet, do not cover your beard, and do not eat the customary bread. That evening my wife died, and the next morning I did as I had been commanded. Then the people asked me, Will you not tell us what all these things that you are doing mean for us? I therefore spoke to the people that morning, saying to them, Thus the word of the Lord came to me, Say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, I will now desecrate my sanctuary, the stronghold of your pride, the delight of your eyes, the desire of your soul. The sons and daughters you left behind shall fall by the sword. Ezekiel shall be a sign for you. All that he did you shall do when it happens. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. You shall do as I have done, not covering your beards nor eating the customary bread. Your turbans shall remain on your heads, your sandals on your feet. You shall not mourn or weep, but you shall rot away because of your sins and groan one to another. The word of the Lord. Thanks be God. <clears throat> you have forgotten God who gave you birth. You have forgotten God who gave you birth. You were unmindful of the rock that begot you. You forgot the God who gave you birth. 
When the Lord saw this, he was filled with loathing and anger toward his sons and daughters. I will hide my face from them, he said, and see what will then become of them. What a fickle race they are, sons with no loyalty in them. You have forgotten God. Since they have provoked me with their no God and angered me with their vain idols, I will provoke them with a no people, with a foolish nation, I will anger them. You have forgotten God who gave you birth. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. A young man approached Jesus and said, Teacher, what good must I do to gain eternal life? He answered him, Why do you ask me about the good? There is only one who is good. If you wish to enter into life, keep the commandments. He asked him, Which ones? And Jesus replied, You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, All of these I have observed. What do I still lack? Jesus said to him, If you wish to be perfect, go, sell what you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When the young man heard this statement, he went away sad, for he had many possessions. The Gospel of the Lord. We can see in this young man the desire of happiness of plenitude of life, of fullness of life. This is a natural desire. We all want to be happy. And as I have been saying lately, happiness is not a sentiment, is not a state. And an internal state is more than that, is fullness of life. And as I said, it's natural in us to seek happiness because we were made to be happy. To experience fullness in life, of life. Now, if we analyze the question of this young man, he's asking for something, not for someone. He says, Teacher, what good must I do to gain eternal life? And Jesus immediately refers this question to God. God is the only one who is good. He goes from something to someone. And maybe this young man thought that happiness had to do with things. He had a lot of money, let's say. He was rich. And when Jesus addresses happiness 
to someone and not to things. He's given us the clue or the key of happiness. God is the source of fullness of life. This is the first thing we must know as Catholic. God is the source of happiness. Only God, only God is the good. The other things participate in the goodness of God. And that is why we desire and seek things, because they are good. But they always refer to the one who is good. God, the Father, Jesus Christ. But there are some minimum things we can uh, fulfill in order to, to experience or anticipate that fullness of life. And Jesus says, fulfill the good, uh, the Ten Commandments. Do not kill, do not commit adultery, do not steal, and so on. But then this man who has been fulfilling these things since he, since he was younger, Notice that he lacks of, so, of something else. He doesn't feel complete. He, he wants more. He wants more. And then is when Jesus says, follow me. But if you want to follow me, you have to be disattached to the things of the world. So as we can see, happiness or fullness of life has to do first with God, God the Father, and has to do with Jesus Christ. When we follow Him, when we have an intimate relationship with Christ, that is happiness. When we follow Him, when we listen to Him, when we have this special friendship with Him, this communion with Him, that is the source of happiness. Now, let's put this, let us translate this into our lives. When we come to church, when we seek Jesus, are we looking for Him out of self-interest self or are we looking for Him for Him Himself? We know Jesus is God, as the Father is God. He has the same divine nature that the Father has. They share the same divine nature. Jesus Christ is the source of our happiness. When we follow Him, when we try to put into practice His teachings, that is what makes you happy. That is what makes you to feel the fullness of life. Of course, we ha you have to pay a price. You have to put aside those things who attach you to the world, to the things of the world. And, and this man went away sad. Sometimes when Jesus asks something from us, and we don't want to give in. We go away sad. So let us meditate on this and let us preach it to others. See, there are many good things in the world, many beautiful things, but they all are always referring to God, who is the good who is the goodness itself. And then we have to pray the price. If we want to experience that fullness of life, we have to pay the price of following Jesus Christ, who is the path to heaven, who is the path to God the Father. Let us pray in silence.
Dear brothers and sisters, gather as one to celebrate the good things we have received from our God. Let us ask him to prompt in us prayers that are worthy of his hearing. For Francis our Pope and Charles, Charles our Bishop and all the clergy, with the people entrusted to their charge, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those who hold public office and those who assist them in promoting the common good, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those who travel by sea, land, or, or air, for captives and all held in prison, let us pray to the Lord. For all of us gathered in this sacred place, by faith and devotion, and by, life, and by love and reverence for God, let us pray to the Lord. We pray especially for the sake of this community and for those who have commended themselves, their prayers and concerns to our supplications, let us pray to the Lord. May the petitions of your church be pleasing in your sight, O Lord so that we may receive from your mercy what we cannot ask out of confidence in our own merits. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. For the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer to your majesty, O Lord, the sacrament of unity and peace. As we celebrate the memorials of the Abbot St. Bernard, a man outstanding in word and deed, who strove to bring order and concord to your church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of Saint Bernard, you bid your church rejoice. So too, you strengthen her in the example of his holy life. Teach her by his words of preaching and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so, with the company of angels and saints, 
we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have fellows worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered, gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread through all the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Charles, Charles our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you through all the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, and with Him, and in Him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The source of all the good and goodness of the things is God. And that is why Jesus addresses the question of this young man to God, his Father. But then, in order to reach this fullness of life, which is God, we have to follow Jesus. We have to fulfill the commandments, but we have to go beyond the commandments. We have to live in communion with Christ. And this, we have to pay a price for this. The price of renouncing to those things that
get us apart from God. But sometimes we have to purify our intentions, motivations, when we follow Christ. We follow Him out of self-interest and not for Him. We are always interested on our issues, on our interests, but not, we're not interested in God. We give thanks to the Father for His blessings, and we ask Him the grace to live in communion with Him through Jesus Christ our Lord. We say that prayer Jesus taught to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. <clears throat> May the food we have received, O Lord, as we honor St. Bernard, work its effect in us, so that strengthened by his example and instructed by his teaching, we may be caught up in love for your incarnate word, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen.